This is a telescope. This is a camera. If I look through here, I have a very good view of the back of the camera. Astronomers haven't always had cameras. Both in terms of mankind and space, they're pretty new. Why don't we go and check out something else that's new now? Here we are at the newly erected Orford Castle, recently completed by King Henry II in the 12th century. Why don't we head inside for a quick chat about astronomy? We're currently down to the bowels of the castle, but where the real action would have been back in the 12th century would have been up on the roof if King Henry II actually would have led astronomers up there to capture the night sky. So here we are, still on the roof of the castle, and you can only begin to imagine what 12th century astronomers would have been able to see under these immense dark skies. Modern astronomers measure how dark a sky is on something called the Bortle scale. The scale ranges from nine heavily light polluted to one perfect dark site. Back then, basically everything would have been a perfect dark site, Bortle 1. Let's take a look at the Helix Nebula today. I'm going to show you what we can do with visual astronomy equipment and what you could expect to see with that against what we can do with imaging equipment. Now, I'm not about to pretend for one second that I know anything about visual astronomy. A friend of mine came around the other day and dropped me a copy of the very well-known Turn Left at Orion, a visual astronomer's guide. If we take a look at the Helix Nebula in this book, it sets the expectations very well for what you'd be able to see visually through both a low-powered three to four inch wide field refractor and a medium power eight inch Dobsonian. However, it doesn't even hold a candle to what we're able to acquire with modern imaging equipment. Those 12th century astronomers would have been absolutely blown away by what we're able to capture today with our modern equipment. On the Telescope Live site, we have access to data captured with telescopes all around the world, which means that if a target isn't necessarily visible from where we live, you can jump on there and for a small subscription fee, gain access to that data and process it for yourself. Let's do that with the Helix data now. Behind me, you can see the framing that I would achieve on the Helix Nebula with my own rig outside, which is a 26 megapixel camera. You can actually see in the center of frame there that the Helix Nebula itself is quite small. But here's an all-in-one comparison. On the left, in white, from the book, Turn Left at Orion, a four inch refractor, and then an eight inch Dobsonian. So that's what you can expect to see with a visual astronomy setup, looking through an eyepiece with your own eyeball. Then behind me in bright blue, we have the image that I've processed using telescope live data, about 27 hours of mono narrowband data in SHO. A very quick edit, nothing fancy, but you can see there an incredible amount of detail compared to visual, and that's what you should expect. Today's video isn't sponsored. I'm actually a Telescope Live member. I pay my 15 pounds a month with my 20% discount and they give me 20 credits to put towards whatever I want. That can be to accumulate, to actually rent a telescope and image with it myself, or what I do is I buy the one-click bundles. Those are bundles of crowdfunded imaging sessions put together on a certain target. Like the target behind me, for example, is 27 hours of mono narrowband SHO data I'll put the details of that TS Live Rig in the description below. You should know that one credit on Telescope Live is worth about a pound 40. So the image behind me cost me about 24 credits or roughly 33 pounds. I actually think that's a pretty good bargain considering that once I'm finished processing this image, I can do with it what I want. I can sell it if I like. So it's my own image and there's no restrictions on what I do with it. The only restriction is if you intend to post it to social media, you should credit TS Live and they've got a bit of a blurb on their website about how to do that. Today's video was one I've been meaning to make for a while. I wish it had existed when I'd gotten into the hobby, specifically to show me what the expectations could have been if I had decided to go down the road of getting, for example, an eight inch Dobsonian telescope to do visual astronomy with. As an astro imager, I've effectively bypassed visual astronomy altogether, which means that my knowledge of where things are in the night sky is really quite poor. I'm trying to remedy that now. I went over to a friend's house, the one who lent me the book, and we had his little 60 millimeter Takahashi out the back there. And for the very first time, I got to put my eye in an eyepiece and take a look at Saturn. And I was absolutely blown away. And it was just there and it was so still, it actually looked like it was painted or like someone had taken a photo and put it in the telescope. It was incredible. 
To get into visual and imaging at the same time is usually beyond the means of a lot of people. And so they have to make this decision, which way do I go? Do I go down the visual road or do I go down the imaging road? Now for me, I'm really happy that I went down the imaging road because of my background in photography and the fact that it enables me to share my images with everybody. If you go down the visual road, really the only person who's benefiting from that experience, if you will, is you, because you're there in first person with your own eyeball taking it in. But if you go down the imaging road, you have that ability to share your images with people and show them what's out there. And I think that's an incredibly valuable thing. Okay, I'll see you on the next one. What if I tell you there's a hobby out there that will test your patience like no other and getting transferred into the body of the camera, that will satisfy your tinkering needs, that will drain your bank account, that will mean you don't need to come in contact with anyone, ever. Welcome to the world of mono astrophotography. This is Astro with Chris.